Hey everybody, welcome to Physical Friday this week. This is a follow-up to last week when we talked about how to pull a boat. We had a viewer write in and ask me a question about shoulder fatigue as it applied to pulling a boat. Now, as you're pulling a boat, you are pushing, pulling down on the pole, you're pushing the boat forward. A lot of times we're doing this in the wind. A lot of times we're doing it with a heavy loaded boat full of customers or bait or whatever. And some of my uh, advice were, was to use exercise that strengthen the grip, use some exercises that strengthen the shoulders. We went over those last week. But what I'll, one of the things that I wanted to talk about this week was if I only had one of those exercises, which thankfully I don't, I don't think that there is one magic exercise for anything, but let's just say, let's just pretend. I only have one exercise that I can do what would that be? Now, I want to be a competent outdoorsman. I want to be physically fit. I want to be strong and healthy. And I want to be able to do all the things that we do as hunters and fishermen. I want to carry heavy stuff. I want to throw the cast net. I want to be able to pick up my, my, the trailer tongue and put it, on the, put it on the hitch. I want to be able to fight fish. I want to be able to lift heavy things into the boat. I want to be able to help someone if they fall out of the boat. All of these things are very, very important. It all comes down to a couple of things. One, grip. Your grip has to be really strong. Every good fishing guide I know has a really strong grip. That's because they have developed that over many, many years. So if you're just getting started or you want to become a, a guide or you want to become a better guide or you want to... Um, eliminate overuse injuries. These are some things that you can uh, that you can work on. So, if I only had one exercise, and it's funny because right now a lot of people may be in this situation with quarantine, lockdown. You are very limited on equipment. You're not able to get to the gym. A lot of fishing guides aren't able to get to the gym anyway. You start early, you end late. There's no time for the gym. So, you need to have something at your house or something that you can do that will help you to uh, develop the strength that you need. So if you're not going to the gym, I would suggest having a couple of kettlebells or dumbbells. You don't have to have kettlebells to do these exercises. They can be done with dumbbells. The dumbbells usually in a regular world can be found at a lot of garage sales uh, you don't need expensive equipment whatsoever. You can probably even make your own uh, with, with something heavy. But a kettlebell is a really good tool. It can be kept behind a door. It can use, be used to prop the door open. You can use it for whatever you want. When it's not in use, it's out of the way. It's small. It's compact. And uh, you don't need very many of them. If you had two kettlebells and a pull-up bar, pretty much you're going to be able to get some incredible workouts in. One of the things that we're going to talk about today, or the thing we're going to talk about today, is the benefit of the kettlebell swing. Now, the kettlebell swing is an exercise that is definitely not a new exercise. It is an old exercise. The Russians have been using the kettlebell swing for a long time, develop strength and conditioning in they're athletes throughout all sports, wrestlers, uh, judo, everything, all the combat sports. They have all their athletes doing kettlebell swings. Here is uh, Pavel, uh, who's kind of the king of this. He's doing kettlebell swings. This is with a towel to show how the form works. Um, this is your basic Russian kettlebell swing minus the towel. The towel is there to show you proper form. If you're getting slack in that towel, that is not what you want. So this is Pavel uh, Tatsulin. He has a video that we're watching right now on YouTube. It is called uh, Enter the Kettlebell. It brought the kettlebell to America and was uh, very, very uh, important in that. This is the swing. As he's doing it right now, he's going to just kind of uh, swing it back between his legs a little bit using a straight back. He's going to lift up and bring it right to eye level. That's the Russian kettlebell swing. 
And um, this thing is incredible. It's a great exercise. It's a very simple exercise. It builds strength throughout the hips, the quads, the, the back. But you're also grabbing this kettlebell and you're building strength all through the hands, the wrists, the forearms, your shoulders. Everything that you need is, is in, this, in this simple exercise. Now, there are some variations and some of the variations would be an American kettlebell swing, which is taken over overhead, completely overhead. Uh, James Hobart here on the CrossFit website is demonstrating an American kettlebell swing where the kettlebell goes all the way overhead. Um, so this is one variation. The Russian swing is another variation. Like pull-ups, you have a lot of people that are very um, emotional about this. It's two different swings, two different exercises. You can do it all the way overhead or you can do it to eye level, um, whatever. You want to do it safely with a weight that you can handle. And, uh, and that is the difference between the American and the Russian. You can see all of this. You can go to CrossFit.com. You can look up kettlebell swing or just on YouTube, look up kettlebell CrossFit. And this is probably the first one that's going to pop up. We can go to another one to see how you can use a dumbbell instead of a kettlebell. A kettlebell is a weight with a big handle on the top of it. Um, the rush or the uh, dumbbell swing can be done with a with two hands on the dumbbell, just like we're seeing here. Um, and she is swinging this with. Uh, both hands on the dumbbell, swinging it completely overhead. You can obviously do that to eye level as well. Uh, there's another way that you can do the dumbbell swing, which uh, you just hold the top of the dumbbell and swing it like this. So if you don't have a kettlebell, no excuse. You can do it with a dumbbell. You can do it with a kettlebell. You can do it any which way you want. The common themes here are that the back is straight, and you're using the hips rather than the arms to really build momentum and swing this weight through. But the common theme also is that this is building strength throughout your forearms, your hands, your wrists, your shoulders, your hips, your butt, your hamstrings, your quads, everything. In fact, it would probably be easier to list the muscles that are not working than to list the muscles that are. The kettlebell swing is awesome. It's a great exercise. And in fact, there's another uh, strength coach that I really like and follow a lot. He is His name is Dan John. Dan John has a 10,000 kettlebell swing workout, which is in a month. You do 10,000 swings, kind of like what we did with a push-up. You do 10,000 push-ups in a month. That's roughly 300 a day. This one, you're doing four or five workouts that have uh, 500 swings in them. And uh, the, the 10,000 swing workout is fantastic. Um, one of the things, the, one of the ways that he does it here, you can see um, he does it in sets of clusters. So set one is 10 reps. Set two is 15 reps. Set three is 25 reps. Set four, set four is 50 reps. So you've completed 100 reps and you would do that five times. You're going to put these accessory exercises in between that. So 10 swings, one press. 15 swings, two presses. 25 swings, three presses. 50 swings, rest for a minute, 30 seconds to a minute do it again. You can do that with, with other, um, uh, exercises where you're using the press, you're using dips, you're using pull-ups, you're using goblet squats, you're using all these different, uh, type of exercises to, um, build strength, uh, and to break up the monotony of doing a hundred swings in a row. Anyway, this 10,000 swing workout may or may not be part of the TRP fitness challenge in the future. So stand by for that. So as we get back to the purpose of this, the purpose of any sort of physical fitness as it applies to this show is that it makes us better at what we want to do, which is to be competent outdoorsmen. We want to be able to hunt. We want to be able to fish. We want to be able to do the things necessary, and we want to do them better. 
the kettlebell swing is an outstanding exercise to either throw into your workouts that you're doing or just do it as a standalone. If, if you do nothing else besides pull-ups and kettlebell swings, you are going to be in really good shape. So that's fantastic. It's going to help you build the strength necessary to throw that cast net. It's going to help you build the strength necessary to do your job better or to, you know, have more fun. So if you can, if you can do things easier with less fatigue, you're going to end up having more fun out there on the water or in the woods or wherever you are. So throw the kettlebell swing in there, give it a try. You can look at all sorts of uh, resources. Pavel Tatsulain is really a, a very good resource. Try to find Enter the Kettlebell. I think it's on uh, YouTube. Dan John, you can find him. Uh, he's got some articles on T Nation. Uh, Tnation.com is a good website for that. You can find some of his stuff there. You can also Google him and find his website. You can go to CrossFit, CrossFit.com, and you can look up kettlebell swings. You can find all different types of workouts that you can do with nothing more than a kettlebell. So you do some push-ups, you do some running, you do some kettlebell swings, and uh, there's probably tons of workouts there. But the kettlebell swing, if I only had to pick one exercise, that's probably the one that I would pick uh, for general strength in the outdoors. So that's Physical Friday for today. Hope you get out there this weekend and have a great trip. Um, lots of things are opening up. Marinas, boat ramps, people are going fishing, and the fishing is fantastic. So I hope you get out there. Tag me in your post, uh, at Tom underscore Roland on Instagram. I'd love to see what you're catching this weekend. And all as always, this show is brought to you by Waypoint TV. Waypoint TV is available everywhere. It's incredible. Uh, lately, Waypoint has been um, expanding their reach to these Plus channels. Samsung Plus is one. Um, Pluto, Stir, Zumo, Tubi, um, man, all a bunch of them. And lots of people are watching for free on the apps. If you have YouTube TV or something like that, it's very easy to find those apps. Um, but you can also find Waypoint TV by going to the Ways to Watch page. You can go to the website, waypointtv.com, Ways to Watch, and you can find it anywhere you want. You can figure out how to find it on any of your devices or whatever you have, if that's Roku or Apple TV. We're also brought to you by Manscaped. You can go and get the Lawnmower 3. It's the best trimmer known to man. They spent 18 months figuring out how to make sure that you do not accidentally nick yourself in a very sensitive area. You can get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and use the code TRP for 20% off and free shipping. You can also go to hookgear.com and get anything like this shirt I'm wearing right now. You can get hook products for 30% off by using the code SE30 at checkout. And we're also brought to you by Barracuda Tackle. Barracuda Tackle are the makers of the best cast nets on the market, and they're also doing great things for guides by having this guide relief program right now. You can go there and buy raffle tickets to enter to win trips with some great guides, and then that money is distributed throughout the guide community. So great opportunity there. All right, and that is it for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and we'll see you on Monday.